the next, I want to go to what I call the great equalizer. If you ever see me do a DVD and I don't include a section on, on guillotines, hey, it's probably not me, it's the boss who take it back, okay? Because uh, that's, I think that's the staple of, of all good Valley Tudo wrestlers, everybody, a good guillotine. That's a great equalizer. I can have the, the, you can have the biggest, baddest world champion in any Valley Judo, wrestling, Judo, Jiu Jitsu. Have him right here. You got him in a good guillotine. You know what you're doing? That's a great equalizer. But this is the most important section of this, of this DVD, of any DVD I do. That's a great equalizer. When, I'm, when I walk out, if I don't know my opponent, I'm afraid of my opponent, the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to headhunt. Because if I got you in a guillotine and I know how to do guillotines, Hey, that's the end of story. That's the end of story. That is the great equalizer. And I suggest everyone pay special attention to this 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 uh, this section because when you're tired, you got the other guy in the guillotine. That's that's the time you rest. That's the time he's working. You make him support your weight. Guillotines are important. Guillotine is a very important, very powerful move, especially in the most bar fighting or submission wrestling. But one thing about it. If I have a good enough guillotine, I can make him tired, and I can also rest. If he's in here, we're in a heated battle. I can come to this, this position and make him support my weight, or if I can come to this position and make him support my weight. Either way, I'm resting, he's working, okay? Let's show how we get to these positions. The first one is, maybe I'm inside. I'm using my thumbs when I'm, when I'm here. We get in this position right here. I always use my thumbs, not to do this. If he just does this, it's easy when you just double leg, you should do like knee tilt. So the thing I want to do is, I'm in here, my thumbs in here, and I don't want to be like this. I want to be here and here. And I'm going to go for the guillotine. I never do this. Don't reach, because you'll just take my back. Okay? Always feed from one side to the other. I'm here, I go top of the head, not the neck. I go from here, the top of the head, to this side. And get my leg back. Put my weight on him. I don't want to leave this leg out because he'll take a single leg. If I just do this, he'll take a single leg. Okay? Watch when I do this. I do this and this. Because then I use my entire body weight. I go here to here. Notice I leave the mat. This hand isn't going like this. It's staying here. I'm here, here, and faster. I'm here. Notice when I'm coming down, I'm like this. I'm getting the initial bend right here. Then I'm get my leg back. Now a good drill for this one is just do this to athletes here. This side. This side. Notice the leg. It's very important. And notice where I'm hitting the head. I'm hitting here. The neck, I get, I get nothing here. Here. Another thing about the guillotine is when I do bring them in, First things I want to do, I want to use these. Not this, not this right away, because it gets too, you get too cramped up in here. So when I go here, I put this right on his chin, and to secure this in the first place, I come here on the chin and put this right in my belly. So my belly, this. I'm not like this, I'm like this. On the other side also. So I go here, I'm here. Now I take this hand and I go through here. And I'll do this, I grab, so not a tight grip, but a loose grip, just like this. I don't need this. All I need is this. So I got this here. I hit my stomach. Then I go down to here and do this. Look at the back of my hand. It's on this on this arm right here, like this. Now what I want to do is right here. She's gonna be strong. So I want to control them like this. This is where I want. And it's not hard to get. I mean, it's not easy to get a person to that position. So what I do is this hand is straight. So it's this one. I go here. It's the palm of my hand right here. It's on his chin. Then I push this through here just a little bit, and I got this. Then now that I have this, I want to cinch it. I'm going to use my elbow to go here, to cinch his elbow. Now I move my shoulder to the back of his neck. So I'm here, and I'm using my head here also. This is a nice, tight, a nice, tight grip, okay? Now, for takedowns from here, I can do several things. I can circle and get that leg right there. Watch, I'll circle and pull him. I circle, and that pull. From here with my shoulder, I take his head to his knee, Put my hand on the mat right behind his, on his, uh, behind his, uh, his, his ankle. But the fact of the matter is, I want to touch the mat. I can't do it here. If I do it here, he can sprawl. But if I do it here, he can't. 
Now all I'm gonna do is just a simple little, you don't need a lot of force, so just do this. Now let's show that same movement, but from another, a slightly different angle. I'm right here, get the head down, boom, and here, okay? Now all I'm doing is I got this hand here, and I go here, and I cinch. I'm using my head. Now I'm gonna do this on a circle, and then pull. Circle, and pull. When he does this, I use my shoulder. When he, when, after he takes the big step, boom, I use my shoulder. I'm still holding right here, holding his, holding his chin. I take my shoulder, I go to one knee, to here. Okay, from here, all I do is just a little, this, here, go through here, all I want to do is circle and pull. Circle and pull. Now take his shoulder, his head, to his knee, here. Now I just do that. Suppose I have an opponent, when I circle, he stays in that same place. He doesn't circle this time. Bop, right here. My stomach, gets the chin, go through here. It's important, this goes through here. Not this, not backwards. It goes like this to here, and cinch. Now when I have a circle, he's not gonna move. So I'm gonna, you circle, they don't move. That's no problem. Now all I wanna do is go the same knee, take the inside, the inside, touching the mat. Very important, I touch the mat, drive him in here. Now I'm gonna show up when your opponent doesn't move. If I go to a circle, when I pull, he just stays in the same place. Okay. So. And if you notice, on this last one, getting the cross leg it's better for submission wrestling and jujitsu because I don't end up in the guard from the guillotine. I'm right here, I circle, it doesn't move. Right here. I'm not in the guard. This is a very important takedown to learn because I see a lot of people, they'll get guillotines and they can't score takedowns. They're sitting here doing this and doing this and doing this and doing this and the guy just falls back. You don't have anything. So this move is very important, I think. This is a very, very strong position. Also from the same position, the guillotine, there are a couple good throws. Notice my hips on this throw. I'm not giving him a single leg or a double leg with my body. I'm right here, I go from snap down, boom. Take the guillotine, I go here, and I got it. I cinch again. Once I cinch, I want to move my shoulder down to like here, like the nape of his neck. I don't want to be a period, it's too strong, too much power. I want this. I want this little tie right here. My, I want to watch me walk into this. Put my shoulder right here, my hand like this on his chin, my other chin hand, keep in the same position. I run it through here and do this and cinch to here. Okay? This is where I want. He has absolutely no power. Look where he is. His hand's almost to the back of his head. This arm is almost to the back of his head. Okay? But for the throws, we'll do something slightly different. I'm right here. I got this. Okay? So if you throw what I want to do down, now I'm going to go high. Keep my legs back, go to here. Now I'll lock, I go from this lock to this lock. Here. Here to here. And to make it tight, I do this and this. Keep him controlled. And I put his head in my stomach. It's here. 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 Now, to keep him from having power or being able to get to my legs, I kind of sit right in here. It brings him to a lower plane so that he can't really attack as, as well as he could if I stay here. So I'm here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple steps in, boom, boom, and just thrust my hips. Here. And sit. Straight to it. His head is in my stomach now. This is another one. For this one, I go from this to this, where I'm sitting. I got his up his chin here. But I'm taking this hand and putting it here. I'm doing this and this. Okay? Now all I want to do is take a few. I'm putting all my weight on him also. Make a few steps. I'm sitting even more. Okay? Sitting even more. Now I just go here. I'm right here. I know I want to throw. Sense it. I know I want to throw. So now I got to go back to this. And push it back in my stomach. And I'm sitting. I'll take a few steps. 
Just sit down. Now I'm going to show another throw from the guillotine position. It's kind of like the last one. I start with all the same stuff. Snap down to here to here. Stomach in my head. Both hands right against his chin. Now I'm going to take this hand and go through here and a lot. And a cinch. Okay? Now for this throw, what I want to do is I'm going to come here and here and right here. I don't want to do it like this. See a lot of guys slip from that. It's like going here. Right, I mean, right here, keep the head down. Maybe after this, going to my, my wrist. Now using all this and take this leg too high. Okay, to here. Here, I got the lock, cinched it. I go for this lock right here, hot lock right here, then lock over here. Got this nice and tight, get my leg through, then fly. The important thing on this one is that I lock tight on this arm, here and here. I grab my own wrist and do this. Because if I just roll through like this, a lot of times you guys, they do this. He's going to stay strong when I go through. They do this. But by keeping the arm here, and then grabbing my own, and then my, uh, pressing my elbows together, and putting all this to my, to my body, I, got, I have less of a chance of slipping. And cover. Okay, there are other ways to get into the guillotine position. I love this position. So here, like I said, I can rest. I'm more powerful. He's made more tired. So I'm right here, I'd say he's got a, I got an underhook and he's got, a, he's got an overhook. Maybe when you're battling here for, for, uh, for inside positioning or hand fighting, whatever. Now all I want to do is I want to pull back and use my forearm in an angle. Just about, about at his ear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch out this area right here. So right in here, I'm going to stretch out. So I hit this right above the, right, a little bit below the ear. I pull down here and I push here until he gives it to me. I don't take it, I don't do this and then this because he can just stand straight up and take my back. Okay? So what I want to do is come here, I just want to go to here and stretch all this out until he gives me the guillotine. Then I'm in the same position I was in before. Here, take my forearm right at the ear. All I'm down is just push. Not, I'm pushing more on an angle like this and going like this. So I'm here, do this, and then cover. Okay, now we have another guillotine from here, another way to attack the guillotine. I like this one, I use it a lot. I'm right in here, when you're battling, he's trying to get underhooks and, and, and all these, we're pulling, boom, boom, boom. All I want to do is take my, my foot right here and go to the right, on the, on the underhook side. I'm going to go one, then I'm going to swing around and sit. Notice on this, I keep my head up, and when I go around, I use my entire body weight. Because we're right here, and when I spin around, I, I take a step out just a little bit. I use, I go down here so I get some power, a little pop, I go here, and watch this. I use my whole body to bring him down. Step out, then I go down just a little bit on this side so I get some power, I spin around, and keep going. Same thing from here, from this, from this angle. One. Two. Head up. Concentrate on this right here. This. Because I'm here. Look, I'm fit right now. I'm facing this wall. When I swing to here, I'm facing this wall. Okay? From here. Here. Where's this motion? Right here, I use my entire body weight. Head up and do it. The next guillotine I want to show is one from a knee bump, from an underhook. I got an underhook, especially in Valley 2, though. Valley 2, a real good place to be to push your opponent to the ropes or wherever you want is to get this underhook right here and, this, and secure this arm here so you can't hit me. The way I do that is I pull this elbow to my waist, to my side, and I'm here. This way, if he wants to pummel in, or a pummel, he can't. Okay? And that's what I want to prevent. And this right here, I got a cup. Got my, my hand is cupped. So what I'm going to do is the cup side here, it's about right here, here, and this. If say he's, he's got inside, if he's inside right here, the thing I want to do, remember, head, leg, same side. If from here, the head, I can still defend this leg, but this leg I can see it's in front. So I do this. So we've got two positions here. One is 50-50. This one is under over, I call it 50-50, because he's got the same thing I have. So I defend this leg, and this leg I can see, I can better defend because I can't see it. But when I go to this side, I just, um, 
the tire right here for Valley Tudo or Nobles Bar Fighting. I put this leg in. So now what I want to do is I'm, I'm, I want to use this position to push. It's a real strong position for pushing because I'm right here. Just like if this is the door and somebody wanted to come in and hurt me and I don't want them coming inside, I would do this. Same thing with him. Same thing. Look at my head position. If he goes to hit me with this, it's not. I try to hit me the other side. He doesn't have anything. So I'm saying, right here I'm pushing. So now what I want to do is use this leg up against his leg to take away a little bit of his, his, his balance. So I'm right here. Look where this hand is. It's here, not here. I'm here. This is here. Forcing out this way. Push, push, force out this way. Okay. Now what I want to do is cause a guillotine from the same position. I'm right here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go put my, my foot right next to his foot. And then what I want to do is turn my knee and change levels. I go here. Now let's go. I got the guillotine again. I'm right here. I'm pushing away from the push back. What he's doing. Then I take this. I go here. And I fall. Look, I'm, I'm doing this motion. I'm going here. Pushing. Pushing. Then what I want to do is go here. Then when I go up, I do this. Here. Look how close my foot is to his foot. Look how I change level so I can get more, more battling out of this knee in my thigh. Here to here. Same time, guillotine. Pushing and pushing and pushing, keeping this up against the slot, his thigh, and I go here. I'll move my foot, I'll look down, move it close, okay? Then I go here, and boom, to the guillotine. And here, here, boom, boom, boom. This, I go here. Okay, from the front headlock also, there's some good chokes, some good finishes. One I like to use is, I get the head in. Look, I'm keeping my head, I'll do this. I don't do this. I've been doing guillotine since I was a kid when I didn't have any technique at all. So if I get a guillotine, he can't take me down because I can control the situation. Maybe you get him tired and he'll fall down. So I don't want to get this. So what I do is I keep my hands like this. From here, boom. I want to create this kind of motion. This, where something goes in and it locks. See that? It locks here. I don't just go in and just come back out. So I'm here. So I got the chin here. I keep it in my belly. I go through here. Or if I just want to go straight for a choke and valley too, though, I keep my, the palm of my hand on his chin, keeping his, his head in my stomach. I take my other hand, I put it over the top of this. One thing about this is he attacks my hands attack. If he attacks, look, if he attacks any kind of way, I just keep changing. If he attacks two on one, I'm gonna keep changing. If he, check, if he checks, tries to check both, both hands at the same time, it's just too strong. It's just my hand against his hands, it's just basically hand strength, and he's in a bad position. So what I'm from here is use this into his throat. And I got the other one here, and what I wanna do now is I wanna take a few steps up, and sit. Now all I want to do is thrust my hips in. From here, here, and do this. So that one's, let me show what I got here. I'm like this. I'm here, and I'm here. Now I put my elbows together, and pull them back to my, to my uh, body. Now it's nice and tight. Now all I do is I take this up, pull this in, and do this. Take this up into his neck, pull these in, and do this. My hips are going like this, just straight in. Relatively simple. Keep it tight by doing this. Then we're going to go to defenses for, for the deep guillotine, how to escape. And that's important too for this person, because the person who's in the guillotine, it's important that you know what you're doing and what he's doing, that you know how to control what you're part of the deal. Because we, we don't want to get hurt in this position. So we're going to show right now some really good throws from the guillotine, some good escapes. I got one here, Rico Chip really taught me, he loves this. Rico's a good friend of mine, he's a good technician, I think he would do like this. It's a good, easy escape, so pay special attention to that one also. Okay, now I want to show defenses to the guillotine. And most of these work very well in Valley Tudo. And there are a lot of, a lot of uh, guillotines that are being used in, in uh, Valley Tudo. So it's very important that you know how to more or less defend against them. And that basically you'll just get there and that's really quick because the guy's got a guillotine. The first one, I'm going to do, uh, he's got a guillotine on me. 
Come on. He's right here. This one is really good against the ropes, because I'll see a lot of times he'll be right here against the ropes or in the cage. And this guy only pretty much has one thing. He can't sprawl. If I go to shoot, he doesn't have a good sprawl. He's not going to have much punching power from this position if I got him against the cage, okay? So one thing I want to do right here is if I got to more or less protect my head, because the first time I do this, that's the only thing you do is guillotine, okay? So from right here, the thing I want to do is take this arm right here, the free arm, I'm going to step to him up against the cage or the ropes, do a high cross motion up his butt, like this. Not, grab, don't grab the leg. I go straight up here, lift. Don't look too high. Then come across the head here. He's got, a, he's got the guillotine. The thing I want to do is I'm going to step to him. Step to him and under, up to here. The worst thing you can do right here is still try to get the takedown. If I go for a bad double leg or something right here, and he guillotines me, I don't want to continue with this move. It's dangerous. I'm going to defend my head first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step in here and lift. And then come across here. This. Take down. Get the guillotine. What I'm going to do is try to protect. First, I try to protect my neck in here. Then I step under here. Look, I'm almost like going to the bathroom. I'm going like this. Okay? I got more power going this. Just like doing a squat. You're not going to squat like this. You're going to go squat just like this. Same position. Yep. Come across the head, and come down. The next defense is for when he only has your neck and not an arm. He's just going to choke him from here. To right here, choke him. Here or here. And the thing I want to do is, first of all, I want to protect my neck. So I take this hand, put it about where his wrist is, and pull. So I don't go out as fast. I take this one, and put it right through here. Now, watch, I'll keep my legs straight, my knees are locked. And I go to my, I go to my, uh, my heels, to here, and here, I fall. The reason I'm on my heels, I'm like this. He's trying to pull me this way, like this. So I go here. But if I go to my heels, and I straighten my legs, I'm locked up right here. And I'm already falling. Here. The whole entire time, when I do this move, I want to keep my legs straight here, and hopefully my body also. I fall and twist. Here. Because he's pulling me. So I got to get to here. And I just fall. And another good defense, especially if he's got an arm locked in there. You got the guillotine, he's got my arm locked here also. Okay, the thing I want to do now is the important thing here is a good, a good base. Right here, good and solid. Get my shoulder to, shoulder to the outside. Come here, maybe I'll push here. Here. So I want to do a straight angle here. Now I'll use my hips and go here. He's got the guillotine and my arm. He's trapped in there also. So what I want to do is go here. I got to get my shoulder out. Look, good base. Shoulder here. And then pop. Look what that does to him. He's got the guillotine right here. I move just, just a little motion to here. Now, this can happen. I don't want to do it here because if I stay here and try to do it, his, his hand's going to hit his body. But if I go just here a little bit, so I get my, keep, keep the lock, get my shoulders out, get my shoulder out. Now I'm sitting, I pop my hips. What happens? It does this. One, and then when I pop, two, look where he goes. Another finish in there is when the guy's on both knees, the opponent's on both knees, and he's got a guillotine. This one proves pretty effective. I learned this from Dave Schultz back when we used to work on guillotines every day at the Olympic Training Center. He was really, really good at them, and I wanted to get good at them, so we worked out together a lot of times on these. Um, if you saw Minotauros Moxes against Bob Sapp, same movie used to get from up under, okay? But look, what's, this side right here is open. I'm right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try pot up. I'm gonna circle here just a little bit. See, now I got a little bell. From right here, I'm just dig into the mat and go straight up here. From here, I turn here. Notice this leg. I'm not sitting on it like this. I'm here. 
We've got the guillotine. First thing I'm going to do is tripod up. Circle a little bit and use my hands and my legs to pull this power through to here. One smooth movement. I'm right here, tripod up, circle a little bit, then go here. But here, I turn. The mistake a lot of athletes make when they do this move is through here. He's got the guillotine, they tripod up, they shoot through, and they go to here, like this. I got nothing. I have, it's very important that I shoot through, that I circle, I shoot through here. Head up, chest out. Look at this leg. Straight line here. Not like this. Not like this. But here. One of the mistakes I see in jujitsu from this position is people do like a, they do like a sit out, and a lot of times afterwards they get mounted. And what they'll do is they'll kind of sit up to here, grab the elbow, and sit through here, and the guy will just mount. That's why I don't like that sit out. That's why I prefer. Tripoding up, get just a little bit of room, and shoot through to here, and this. One important thing or rule for uh, submission grappling, wrestling, jujitsu: keep your head up, because everybody's looking for guillotines. If I come out here and remember the snap downs going here, what do I do if he goes to snap me down? He goes to snap me down. I put my forehead into his chest, and I push here. One more time. I'm here, he does it. Okay, look, my thumbs are in his armpits. I'm pushing up, I'm going like this. He's like, with my forehead here, he's like this. It's easy for me to push him, okay? Um, so always keep your head up. Especially you Valley Tugel guys, here against the cage, against the ropes. Like I said before, this guy's got nothing but a guillotine. If I go for a double leg, he can't sprawl, but if I don't keep my head up, if I keep my head here, he's got a guillotine. So what I want to do here is keep it up. If I go for a single, double leg, anything from here, I got to keep my head up. Out here, especially like in jiu-jitsu, what they'll do is a lot of jiu-jitsu players, they'll get the guillotine, and then what they'll do is they'll jump guard. Here, in this kind of a position, okay? We got two things we can do from there. The first thing is a throw that I showed earlier. He's got the guillotine. I immediately go for this and this and go to my heels. If he tries to jump guard, it's a little bit more difficult for him. So as he snaps it down the guillotine down here, I go to here. I'm falling already. Okay? So as soon as he gets it, especially with somebody you've competed against before, you know this is what they do. They get the guillotine, go to here. You want to go to heels because you want all of the pressure going back. You're going to be falling already. Okay? Another thing. Say so he gets it, and he goes, I know he's going to jump guard. I just, I can feel it. So when he goes to do it, I'm not going to try to catch his leg, but I'm going to go here. Go. Here. Let's go to here. Don't try to catch the leg. Just go to your thigh right here, and use your other hand to push him off. Now we're going to show a few drills you can do, and these are basically to build your confidence for throwing, to build the confidence of the person you're going to be throwing, so you know that basically you know what you're doing, and also to loosen up your back and get you nice and nim uh, limbo so that you can do these exercises well and fairly safely. The first thing we're going to start with are drills and stretching exercises for doing throws, and these are very important, especially this first one, it's neck bridge. Very, very important in learning to throw. And I recommend about a minute a piece on each. The first again, a minute in front, a minute with the back bridge. Now the second exercise is a wall walking exercise. 
to loosen up the lower back. Get a couple feet from the wall, do a back bridge, and go down. You touch the floor with your hands. And when you start doing this, you should work your way up into the point where you can do probably, do it 10 times fast. Just do do back, 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 down, back, up, down, up, down, okay? The other exercise is this one. He holds my hand right here, with a shake like this. Then he holds my, uh, my arm right here. And all I want to do is do the same motions that one would do when doing throws. That motion is you're going to step to your partner, change your level, use your hips, and go back. Okay, now I'm going to go back as far as I can. So I'm here, one, two. Really throw your head back when you do these. Alright, this next drill is very important. It's one for you and for your partner to, to, to practice because it's a landing drill. And notice on all these drills, once I'm more or less, I'm going to throw myself, once I throw myself, notice I land with my legs straight. I don't let my legs bent. If I let my legs bent, there's a chance that you get caught in the mat and I can twist an ankle, I can twist an ankle or a knee. Okay, so let's do the start with these first. And these are for confidence builders for you and for your partner. For, for the person you're going to be throwing, and if this person is going to be throwing you, at least let, us, let the other person know that you know what you're going to be doing and you know how to throw so you get to land safe. This is very important for teach you to throw. Your uh, partner needs to know how to land, okay? And the drill we do for that is, we do like a mock throwing, and notice my legs are kept completely straight the whole entire time. I'm here, and they didn't bend, because if they bend, this like bent, and I kept going, there's a chance that this could get caught in the mat, and I'll do this, like I hurt my knee. Especially if somebody's throwing some high amplitude throws, and they're throwing hard and far, okay? Legs are straight the whole time. And that's a nice little drill to warm up with also. But remember, keep your legs straight. Now, I'm gonna teach how to throw, and a lot of people don't know how to throw it's because they don't know it's all in the hips. I can't just pick up a person, like pick up a person and throw them. It's too hard, and people are too heavy. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you the exercise that we do. Same one we did before, but now with more emphasis on throwing. I'm right here, if my opponent, if my opponent is, is here, the thing I wanna do to throw, I'm gonna come in closer. So from here, I'm right here. I go one, two. One, two. I'm pretending like a person is in my hand right here when I throw. Notice when I get up, I drop, use my hips, and I throw my head back. That's how you get the power in your throat, the hips. Because if he's right here, he's gonna stand right here. I can't throw him like this. I'm gonna throw him if I get down and I bump his leg with my hips. I'm here and so I pop his legs from the bottom. So that's the thing we want to, that's the thing we want to concentrate on. I'm here. Boom, boom. And boom. And throw my head back. Very important I throw my head back. Okay, some of the throws that are dangerous without a crash pack, I'll show the setup store. And basically one is maybe if I go in for a high dive like before, I put right here, I go here, or like in the value two of the wind here, and maybe some kind of way I figure to drop down to his waist. Okay, so I can go for a bear hug or something. So I'm in here. So what I want to do in here is I want him to support all of my weight. Just stand up straight and be strong, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start show you, show you where all the weight is gonna be distributed on his legs. I'm here. I like this. It's hard for me to move in here. A lot of it from here, off my heels, I throw. And what I want to do from here is, like this, here, all I want to do now is just kind of come up and use my legs and here. I would throw back, but I'm not going to do it in here. The other is simply a back throw. I'm right here. All I'm going to do is go to here. Just break my break, come down a little bit right to here. And all I want to from here is just come up, go straight back. From here, watch my legs. I bend at the knees, so nice and low, nice tight grip. I lift them. I can leave lift them and stop. Lift them, put my knees, 
I'm going to mark my uh, toes and throw them over. Okay, now we're going into pummeling. Pummeling is very important for valley too. The most important thing is I keep my shoulders, my, my elbows close to my body. Shoulders in right here. I'm not here. If I go from here, and once I do this, he attacks me. He can take double underhooks. He can get underhooks. He can control me. But look, if I go here, now my opponent has the same thing we were boxing. He just go around. He just go around me or under me to my legs. He can't come through me this way. But as soon as I do this, he can come through me, control me, push me with low speed. But once I do this, he can't do it. Now my opponent has to go around me. He goes around. I circle. Okay. So it's very important to me keeping my elbows in on the attack. And the other thing is keep my hands in here. Once we clinch and we pummel, notice on the pummel here, the pummel's all gonna be shallow, nothing too deep. All shallow pummel. The next thing I'm gonna go through is pummel. Pummel is very important. There's the pummel drill. Well, both guys are right here. Let me go from shoulder to shoulder, to shoulder going inside, going inside, going inside. And look, if you want, if you guys have trouble with this, my thing is, I tell one guy to stand here, I'll stand here, I'm going to hit shoulder, hit my shoulder, hold the shoulder, and then you like swimming. Okay? Now, the important thing about pummeling, especially in Valley Tula, now forms of grappling, keeping the elbows in. If he's here with his elbows up, I got a lot of places I can go. It's easier for me to go here. It's easier for me to go put my head here, pushing and going. It's easier for me to do a lot of things from right here. He's out, got arm drags, a lot of things. But watch this, he closes this, closes them in. All the way in right here. Now it's difficult. I can't go now. I have to go around him. He's forcing me to do something more. I have to go around him to get to him. But if I start to go around him, he's going to circle. Okay? So now I got to do something different. So that's why. We like to keep our arms in. As a matter of fact, when a lot of kids first start wrestling, they'll tie tape around them so they have to wrestle like this. Okay? So now that's why I pummel. Pummel. I'm keeping my arms in. I'm just going, look, I'm not going real deep, I'm going shallow. There you go. Because if I just walk out in a fight or a match and we get, we get in a clinch, and I just, I'm like this, he's just going to go under. And control me. He might even take two in hooks. He might even go for both of them at the same time if I give them to him. And yeah, now he's got the upper hand. So the thing I want to do is we clench, boom, boom, in here. Look where I went. Very important. Because if he's right here, I can't work. I can't go down. But if I come in the clinch here, look where I'm here. Look where I'm on the other side. I'm not real deep here. I'm just right here. There's no space. There's no space. There's no space here, okay? The thing I want to do now is, see, I can, I, if I'm right here and I got space, right here, I can go inside here to here. And that's what I want to do. Go from this to this, okay? Now I've got your hand. I got both hands in, two, uh, two insides right now. I'm come back out. So I'm here, wait, from here. Boom, boom. Let's come on one more time. Important that you keep your elbows in. Very important. And just pummel shallowly. I'm going to start now with the proper ways to tie up in the clinch in Valley Tudo fighting. In Valley Tudo, there aren't as many as there are in uh, freestyle and probably just regular grappling. So we'll start off with the first one. So it's the, the clinch here, under classic under over. And the classic under over, I always want my head and my leg on the same side. Because if I do it, if it, the same thing with him, if he's got this leg in front and this leg back, this is, this is wrong. Because it gives me a lot of opportunities to score. I can go here, I can go and suffer inside trip to here because it's so close to me. Okay, I can attack easily. But if he puts it back, see, now it's hard for me to get to. You can even put it back even further, defend it. Put it back even further. See, the thing about this is, right now he's only defending one leg. And that's the leg that he can see. He can't see this leg. But I can, I have access to it, but right now it's too long for me to do all those other things to it. So, I want to also with my hand, I want to clinch right here. Not here. There are people who can work from here, but you're going to get more for your money by working right here. Pushing right here. He pushes, pushing. I'm pushing right here. Another thing with this, 
If he goes through any type of a throw, all I have to do is this. He doesn't have anything. If I feel like he's going to throw me, I can push away and get out. So it's very important. This here. And also when you're pushing to the ropes, this is going to make it even, even better for you because he has nothing to hang. He doesn't have a handle here. If I'm like this, he push me. But he doesn't have a handle. I got two handles here. One here and I got one here. Push. He doesn't have so just, He doesn't have that much power there in that position. Okay? So that's the classic under over. We're going to show a lot of throws from that today. So then the next one is two, uh, double unders. That's when I pummel to this position. And from here we have a lot of techniques also. The important thing for me here is same thing as before. My head and my leg are on the same side. I want to only defend one leg. Here, I'm defending both legs. He got he's two attacks now. Now he's only got one. Okay? And the good thing about this locker, what I want to do is the best control is not right here. I only go right here when I'm ready to take him down. Right here, this grip in the middle of the back is so when I want to take him down. Notice my leg position. Okay? So I want to start off here. I need the most control. I want to start with this tie. Like this. It doesn't have to be real strong like this. It's right here. And what I want to do is I want to push this tie up to his neck. See? Nice like this. That takes away some of this mobility. Here, we're here. Okay? All right, the other tie. This is one I like a lot, and it's a collar tie. Uh, Randy Couture was very successful with this one when he uh, fought in the UFC. Guys didn't know how to defend against it. He would go here, almost like he's going to strangle you with his forearm. And this back hand is not very deep. It's not way over here. It's just right here shallow and right here. And when he clenches with me here, it's like this. Like you ran, bop, bop. So you have to stay out of the way of this hand. Boom, boom. And quickly change. Boom, boom. Okay? Right here. And this is good for pushing also. Okay? Here. Look, I know our tie right here. So he can't hit me. Boom. Boom. Okay? Alright, and the other tie is one from this position also. He's doing things. What I'll do is what I call Swipe his belly button. So I leave my elbow up high, and I do this to get to the other side so he can't take my back. So I'm here to the wrist of the other side. I put my shoulder in his chest, and I close it. Very important that I keep this side closed. Dig in. If I leave it open, pummel. And I'm pummeling here. If he goes inside, if he goes inside, if he goes inside right here, I, all this I did was for nothing. If I keep it closed right here, I put my face right here, it's going to be hard for him to do anything, okay? So right here, he doesn't have, the only problem he's got is his knee. He doesn't have any punches, my face is over here. And when I'm here, the correct position is, I hold the wrist here, with this and this, here, always. And put this in my stomach, so it's strong. I don't leave it right here, because just, just when he'll get away. If I do this, he'll get away. But if I do this, put it in my stomach, grab at the elbow, this nice little handle, handle right here, and just lean for this. Other side is closed. Here and here. Okay? So you can't dig in. And where my eyes are here, look, I'm not here. I'm here. I'm looking at his head. That's what I'm looking for. We'll do some moves from here later also. Okay, now let's talk about pushing. One thing about pushing, it makes it hard my opponent to get any type of an offense off he's going backwards it really is i mean you can't there's certain things you can do but very few especially in valley tudo if you're pushing he's going back you're getting your punches off you're getting your push on you got him going to the ropes going to the cage it's going to be real hard for him to do anything so pushing is important and let's pay special attention to this because we don't want to be pushing with our head down our feet all back behind because then it's going to leave us open to what we're going to my next session section and that's snap downs. Snap down is a real good move for the pusher. If you're a good pusher, you're a good brawler, and this cat, this up your opponent, he can't get any offense off, he's gonna start to push any way he can and trust me, he's gonna push the road And when he does that, that's when we go to snap downs, this next section of the DVD. Snap downs are great for people for, for us pushers. If we push and this guy he, he's he's tired of going back, maybe the referee's telling him he can't go back or maybe he's realized that it's gonna be hard for him get any offense going when he's backpedaling, going backwards. So he starts to push, when he starts to push wrong, 
That's when we get our snap downs. That's when we take them straight down to the mat. We get our takedowns to our guillotines and our knees to the head. Next, I'm going to show snap downs. And snap downs are basically when, a, when your opponent is basically out here, no bounds, he's just leaning on you, pushing like this, okay? That's when we go for snap downs. And it's very important because the correct way to push, like I said before, is this leg right here keeps you from going back. This leg right here, basically just pick this leg up when I go. For Valley two though, the best places, I should, this elbow's in, I go here, and he's leaning. Look, look what this leg does, it just kind of, after I lift this leg up, I move this flat this one forward, this one goes, does this. That's all I'm doing. Just kind of leaning and pushing. Right here. Now see, if he goes to push me in a straight line, look, he goes to push me right there. Look what's happening. He's going straight from here all the way down my leg, and this is keeping me from going by. Okay? Now, so I'm going to do the same thing right here. When I'm in this position, I do the same thing. Head, leg, same side. I got this leg right here, here, so I can't get snapped down. And this leg is straight, so he can't push me back, push me up. He can't push back. This right here keeps him from getting a good grip on me, a good grip. So I'm right in here, like this. I'm taking away a lot of his stuff. I got, I'm only defending one leg. This back leg is straight. This leg keeps from being snapped out. I'm like this. Look what this creates. This is what, where we push from. This is what we want. This. Look at my legs. He can't push me because I'm going like this, and he couldn't snap me down. Like, this gives me really good balance. This is what I'm doing. Much wrong. I'm not bending this leg. I'm just doing this with it. He doesn't have any power, he's just like this. Now let's go to the tie. If I go to the tie, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm here, under, over, leg, head, same side. Look at my shoulder is. Still right here, right here. He's still like this. I'm still like this. I'm going here. Push. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. So slightly dip the shoulder, but notice, I'm keeping my head up. Here. Keep my head up. A lot of guys are real strong from this position. <coughs> I'll be in here, he'll just lean on me and push. Keep your legs straight, that's what they do. They push like this. Keep your legs straight, just lean. Right here, they're real strong. Okay, no problem. From here, I'm gonna try to snap back into a guillotine again. Again, so we're gonna try to snap him down. Put a push. He's right here, he's really leaning hard, pushing strong, strong, strong. Push, push, push. Go here. Okay, a lot of guys, when they're pushing and they're not in good position here, 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 when you are like this, they are very strong, but the fact of the matter is, it's a weak position. They're out of position. If I'm right here with them, he just leans like this, starts to push me. Really leaning over, pushing hard right here. It can be, it can be tough, it can be difficult. So what I want to do is I'm right here. I'm in my good position. For one, for, for a brief second, I'm going to abandon this pushing post right here. I'm going to abandon it, and he's really leaning hard. And I'm going to just go over. I'm going to hit and stop him all. Just go down, just go down. Just relax. From here, he's really leaning, pushing hard. Right in here, I'm not having a hard time keeping them up. Really push, really push. Push hard, push hard, push hard. All I'm doing is coming across, slowly. Just like that. All I want to do is push it right here. Get a little space, come here, and get my legs back. Put them right down to the ground in front of me. He's pushing hard, I'm having a hard time with him. Notice, to keep my body I'm going here to here. Put my form more. One, two, three. Just push them really hard. I'm defending my legs with this hand. He's really pushing hard. Push hard, hard. To here. Same position. So he's pushing me there from, but from another tie. So we're like this. And he's got the outside tie and I got the inside. And he's pushing. We're right here just pushing, 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 you know, trying to prove something who's the strongest. What I'm gonna do now is go the same way. Let's go this side. What I wanna do this this time, he's pushing hard, I use my elbow you here again to here, and use my other hand, bring him down here. He's really pushing. I guess we're right here. I'm gonna go here. Look, I put my elbow high. The back of his head, and this right here, I take everything, I get this leg back out of the way. I take him down and away. Doing this. I'm here, I'm with the elbow here, and I go to here until it goes down. From the same position, the snap downs, when you got the, those, you see those two bulls out there just really pushing one guy's here, good position, the other guy's just leaning and pushing, leaning and pushing. All I want to do is use my forearm to here. Push, just lean, just lean, just lean. 
I go here. I want to take this down and away. Down and away from my legs. Then I take this back. From here, like this. I go here. I go down and away. One more time from the other angle. I'm here. I'm like this. He's really pushing. I mean, he's just a bull. He's pushing, pushing hard. I go here. And okay. I take my hands to the floor. Then I take this back. Goes here. I go here. Look. Elbows here. My elbow goes here. Not here. From here to here. So you can't get to me. Now I want to just go here. From here to, to, to here. And down and away. Now we're going to collar ties. Collar ties are important because it's a really good way to tie up, but it's all, if you don't know what you're doing, it can be a dangerous way to tie up. So I showed this a lot in a lot of my videos too. In my last video I showed it only because it's an important place to control your opponent and it's another place. A lot of times if you don't have time or your opponent's not letting you get the good grips in, you gotta go for the collar tie. You've got all this in here to block his chest, keep getting to your body. And the other thing is, once you get in there, we can control our opponents from there. We can get some good punches off. We can go for some good things like guillotines and different things. So we got to learn how to control this collar tie. So let's go into the collar tie right about now. And uh, what I'll also show at this time is also defense of the collar tie. Because a lot of people don't know how to. A lot of people, you, if you know how to control the collar tie the right way, you can control your opponent all day long. Ask Randy go to it. Man, this guy can do this. And he, he can control you until your mother can call you for dinner and you couldn't get away unless you ask Randy's permission, okay? So that's that's the best attention to this portion of, of, of the video, of DVD. The thing I'm gonna show next are collar ties. And the collar ties are, are, are very important only because a lot of people don't know how to use them, first of all. And secondly, when they do know how to use them, it's difficult for the opponent to get away to score points or to keep from getting hit. Randy Couture gave people fits in the UFC when he first came in doing collar ties correctly. And what he was doing is, he was going right here, not a little over here, just kind of a light, shallow tie right in here, but the important thing is I keep my elbow in his chest, and I keep this up here. See, like this, right here I can punch. And that's what he was just doing right here, punching, and switching off here, swinging over, punching again, boom, 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 just switching off, punching, boom, 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 coming back to this position. And what people were doing was, they were going under, they were pulling down, I'm trying to get it off like this, making it tighter. Other guys were like pushing up on it. And when they did that, it just went deeper into their throats and, and you could push back easier. Boom, 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 just throwing punches. If you saw some of those early UFCs, he gave a lot of people fits with that, okay? Now I'm gonna show the defense to it. And there's a couple, they kind of coincide with what we saw earlier, but at the same time, one of the defenses sets up something else. The first one is, if he's got it on this side, he's in here, that right here real deep. The first thing I can do, Valley Tudo, I can basically try to block from getting hit over here with this hand. Try to go to his bicep over here. Try to go here and like this. Try to do this while I momentarily take my fingernails. Dig them, don't go for the fingers. I dig them into my neck and pull this down to here. Boom. Okay? All I'm doing, he's here. I'm going to grab his fingernails. Grab first of my fingers into my neck. Scratch them across go under. I go literally under his fingers. Look. Here, under his fingers, and pull this down. Then I want to try to attack. Boom, 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 okay? Now, the other one is, he's got it. Let's take it on this side, so you can see. He's got it right here. I just want to put this, my, my wrist and his armpit. I don't need to tie up anything, but this hand I need to grab at his, at his wrist. Now all I want to do is turn a little bit and use my shoulder to bump this off to here, keeping my head up, keeping my head up. I'm going to go here and here. I'm using my shoulder to bump this off, and I have to keep my head up, because if I go here and keep my head down, he's gonna get to me, okay? Or he's gonna come with the valley two, he's gonna come with the knee, okay? A little bit more difficult, if I go here, here, keep my head up, okay? Because here, if he stays, stays down, I can go to here. I'm right here, I go here, I go here. After I have the wrist with my shoulder, he's on my body weight, come keep this down. Then come over here to me, and get my legs back to protect him. I don't leave my legs in front of him so he can snatch a single leg, or double leg. Another thing I can do from here, I can set up that other throw. If I'm right here, I can go here, especially if I need some points. And this is a good solid throw. You're not putting yourself at risk. You are, but for a brief, brief second, and you should be smart to get out of it. Remember, leg straight. I'm here, I go here, 
I give him the guillotine. When he takes it, I go back to here and cover. And one thing about this throw, I think every athlete should every once in a while change up, try to find something that's new and different that people just don't know that you do, your secret throw or whatever. And every other season or so, switch up and get another one because people will run that one. And this could be your new one. He's here. I go here to, to more or less defend. I shoulder down. He hit the guillotine. I go here quickly. Back to that. The best way to hold a Russian tie is with my shoulder. Russian ties, I'm not going to lie to you, are extremely difficult. I've only seen a few people in my lifetime. I've been to a bunch of world championships, Olympics, and U.S. Nationals. I've only seen a few guys who are good in this position. But one thing about it, when I'm here, the way I want to control it, I'm here, here, I go here. I'm using, look, I'm using my chest on his elbow here for that brief second. This is where I'm using all my weight. All my weight is here. Look, look this elbow's pretty much locked out. I'm going to keep it, selected, keep it slightly bent also. When I'm down, I'm here, I go here, to here. Keeping all my weight on it, with my head up. Like I'm forcing it down, this is my shoulder. Look at my shoulders here. Let's go backwards and give you a back angle of it. All I want to do is go here, my shoulder, here. Keeping it high with my shoulder, keeping all my weight on hand. Watch my shoulder. Go here, I just adjust and slide up a little bit more, and do this. Drag is a very good deceptive move only because it can be a takedown, it cannot be a takedown. It can be a way to tire your opponent out, it can be a way to get out of one position to another. If he's too much in one position, and one way you can tighten your hands fairly well or whatever, if it's not Valley Tudo, maybe it's Valley Tudo. You got some arm drags in there also that I'm going to show. So, uh, arm drag is a good move, especially for taking the back. I watched a, a really, some really good ones that the uh, Abu Dhabi was last year. And man, these guys were. The Brazilians were working them well, going from tricky arm drag to chokes. So pay special attention to this one. You may not, maybe if you don't like it, you may have to defend it one day. So pay special attention to the arm drag. One thing about an arm drag, and just this position right here, and just this position, a lot of times, I know we get in a lot of trouble here, but this gotta get real, real tight right here. You can't really do anything, you can't get your arm out, you don't want to do this because you might give you back. There's a way you get out of that by doing that, but that's not the way. So one thing I like to do here, he's got it real, real tight, is try to use my thumb up into his, his uh, elbow here. Now what I do next is I take my shoulder and I just bang his chest and pull my shoulder to here. So here. Now look where I am. Look where his arm is, where I'm Okay. Now from here, I'm coming in to here. I'm right here. Over here he's really, really tight. I can't really do anything. He's got it so tight. So I take my thumb in there and try to do this. And then come on. Notice, I'm not going down. I'm not right here doing this because he's just going to guillotine me. Okay? You want, he's standing here. I'm right here. He's got this real tight. All I'm going to do is go here. Okay? And then come on in. Watch, right, same thing. See here? I might even have to grab here. If I, if I got really, really long arms, I might even be able to go here if I can't get in here. Here. Now I'll do the same thing. Give him a little bit of space over here. And Pulling in. Okay? So Valley Tulo, this position. I'm in here, he's got it. I got long arms, so I'm going to go right here. Just a little bit below his shoulder, right here. Hold on. Dig in. Pummel in. And close this down. Come back out to here. If I can stay here, he might get a hit me or something. He still do things. But right here, I'm going to get pushing the position back to this. Okay? My leg inside. Remember, from here, I can go this to the gate. He's got really tight right here. Okay, leg, head, same side. I might have to go here. If I can get here, right in this, I'll go to here. Okay, then what I want to do is go my shoulder into his chest to here and pummel. Then once I'm pummeled, look how I'm keeping this right here, close to my body here. So if I just do this, he's going to pummel back and do the same thing again. Same position. So once I get here, I bump across, I pummel in. I'm keeping this tight. I'm like this, then I might come out and do this. And do this pushing position again. Head, leg, same side. Okay? Now from this position, once we've gotten there, let's go to some arm drags. And arm drags are really good from this position, taking the guys back. Okay? I'm right here, I'm going in right here, it's tight. I'm going here, I'm digging in, now come back to here. Let's say he does go back under. See, I'm, I'm sloppy this day. 
I'm a little bit up right here, and he pulls back in. Okay, as long as I'm here, if I can just get to this back, this position right here, I'm okay. From here, I'm going to go down to his wrist. When I go to his wrist to secure this for the under, for the uh, arm drag, I use this finger and this thumb, and my thumb, to go here, the small part of the wrist, here, not up here. He's too powerful here. See, right here, he doesn't have as much leverage. Okay, so I'm start off right here. And what I do with this is I take these two fingers, this part right here, I take this and this, I close them as much as I can, I put them inside my stomach, my waist right here. Right here. Right on my side. From right here to here. Defending one leg, my head, my leg on the same side. So I got this, I got it in my stomach so it's stronger. This right here, I'm slightly lifting, keep them honest. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to go for the arm drive. And uh, I'm going to do it the whole thing straight and then I'll, I'll break it down into parts. So I'm right here. I'm not here. I'm here. Okay, from here, I have my arm drag, and here. From this position, especially for Valley Tudo and Jiu Jitsu, it's probably better to go to the butt. Don't go to his back. Watch where I drop down to and smooth. Let's do it from a couple different angles. Just concentrate on this area right here in my arms and how I change levels. So I'm right here, I go to the arm drag. Here, I just pull. Now I watch my arms. We'll go to the actual arm drag. I'm here. I don't want to start off here. Because the minute you do this, he's gonna he's just gonna roll knuckle roll out. If his value two is gonna knuckle roll out and hit me, do it. Boom. If it's just regular wrestling or or, or value two or I mean or uh, jujitsu, he's gonna roll it out and just grab my wrist. Okay? So I'm gonna keep it here and here, keep him secure. Now I'm gonna take this hand right here. Do what I call swipe his belly. I turn the elbow up. Like this, so we won't take, if I just do this, maybe it'll take my back. Okay? But if I just slowly, meticulously do this, and go to here. Here to here. I make sure my foot is inside, so I want to go here. So make sure my foot is not outside on this move. I make sure my foot is inside and not outside. Here even. From here, swipe the belly. When I swipe the belly, I go for the armpit. I don't want to go here because I might slip or I might. It, it, it's body being that move, you may just do this. But if I can go from the armpit, swipe the belly to here, just to here, look, my hand is open, I'm gonna do this. When I do this, I'm gonna push this to here. At the same time, when this is going by, I'm gonna step to here. And keep my head up, not as quickly as it. Pull this in to there. Watch the timing. Watch the timing. Here. Leg is uh, slightly pointed inside. Watch the timing here. The timing of the arms, the drag, and the footstep. Now watch what I do on this side. I watch a lot of Americans do this move, and they'll keep the arm locked in. I watch a lot of the World Championships. Every European that I saw who was doing this move successfully was basically dragging and going under the arm. He was clearing it. Watch this arm clear the, the, the arm that I drag. I'm going to do it slow first. Can you see it? One here. A little bit faster. Watch how, how subtle the movement is with my arm. I'm not doing this. Because by the time I go here, here, and do this, he's gone. He's going to be pushing back, getting away from me. Okay, so watch how I do this little motion from here, boom, boom. Suppose someone is double unders on you, it's not the end of the world. Somebody's double unders, you're here. We don't, another place, I hate when we just, when fighters find themselves, de self, themselves defenseless. Somebody's got a position, they don't know the position, they don't know how to take down, they know how to defend it. They're just basically waving at the fans, no. And then they get thrown or, or loop for a couple points or so. We don't want to do that. When someone is taking double unhooks on us, it's not the end of the world. We still have defenses from there, and let's work them. I've got two real good throws from there, two real good takedowns, let's work on those, okay? And pay special attention to my hands. I don't want to be just waving at another position. I don't want to be just waving at the fans. I want to attack the underhooks, Go for the takedowns, get the points, win the fight, okay? Now for some throws when your opponent has double unders. We just got double unders this time. 
okay? The thing I want to do is, per, first of all, protect one leg. I got a few different things I can do in here. One thing I can do is attack his head and hip, like this. And watch my butt when I do this. Okay? This one works pretty good against the cage also. My opponent's pushing me up against the cage. I may not have as much space, but I can still do it. I want to pull his head down this way and punch his hip out. So I'm right here. Wow. I don't want to just pull his head. I want to get this smack. I want to punch everything here. So I'm doing this. All at the same time, then I'm going to like, drop my weight. Right here. I'm going like this. Keeping my head up. I don't want to get guillotined. So right here, I'm going. Another one from the same position is the throw. I'm right here. I'm going to go in here. Simply control this position. You can't do a whole, whole lot, but stay in here. Don't just do this waving at the crowd. Go right in here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm defending one leg. I'm going to bring this leg up a little bit closer. I'm going to take this leg around and sit. I'm going to sit hard. And take him over my knee. Watch when I go. I'm going to sit real hard this, this side. Right here, controlling right in here. Right here. I'm going to take a big step with this leg. Big step, just in case he's got this leg back. See what I'm saying? So if he's got that leg back, i got to take a big step. I'm right here, he's controlling high. You got a tight grip, keep going here. Notice how I'm going when I go. I take a big step and I sit hard. He's got me, I'm right here. I go here, because I want my whole body weight to be felt by his arms and by my opponent. I'm here, especially if he's getting real tight, I've got him to my entire body weight. So I'm here, go to here, and it almost breaks his grip. Then I take him over this knee. Watch the knee. What I'm gonna do is go here, here, and Okay, now I'm gonna show us an inside trip from the same position. If you bought my last DVD, inside trips are great for Bali to do, let me tell you. It's like, my guys, man, we practice these things all day, every day, only because, dude, when you're in a tight spot, you're tired, you're exhausted, you don't want to be doing double legs and singles, you get knocked out, you're going to get hurt. The thing you want to do, whenever you're super, super tired, you find yourself in a clutch situation, you need to get out, quick, fast, and hurry, man, at the end of practice, my guys are dog tired, we do inside trips. That's our bread and butter, man. That's the thing we rely on. That's the thing that gets you out of the tight spots because if you, it's, it's low risk for the person attempting it. If you slip up on, a, on an inside trip, if, you, if you're doing it right, you're attempting it right, the most that's gonna happen is you're gonna go in, you're not gonna get to take down, but you still end up on your feet. You don't end up in a compromising situation where you might catch a knee to the face or you might get taken down and, and, and just miss out. So pay special attention to this, okay? Another way to escape when your opponent has double unders is inside trip. He's in here, I'm controlling right here. I want to look down at his leg, but I don't use my hand. I don't do this because I'll give him a guillotine. That's so I'm use my peripheral vision. I know where the leg is. Now I want to come across here and go inside. So I'm right here. I'm going to put my toe on the mat, keeping my back leg straight. And I want to try not to fall into his guard. So I do. He can do a lot of things. He can sweep me tough. I come right here, he can sweep me in. A lot of other things. So do it and come down on my knees. Special, special attention to my back leg this time. Watch this. Here. I can win me a motion. I don't want to fall with him. When I go in, this foot, the toe sits on the ground behind me. I'm doing, this is the kind of motion I'm doing. I'm right here. I'm going, because he's holding me up. I want to use my entire body weight. I'm going to go here, here, watch how this arm comes across his face, controlling, I'm looking, even if his leg is back a little bit, his leg is back, until it's still the same thing, it's going to do like a little hop skip, so leg is back, okay, I'm looking at it, controlling, Watch the little. These next throws all belong the arm throw, fam. 
and I like them for Valley too though and I show them to my fighters only because before we there's not a lot of chances of slippage on these because they're all nice tight collar throws throws where I've secured my, my opponent's arms to the point where it's going to be hard for him to slip out even if he's, even if he's, if he's wet and slippery so that's why I show these. Now, I'm, I don't show very many. I got three here that I show and pay special attention. And they're all quick throws, probably two. They're not a lot, they're not too involved. One is one of the, the, uh, the Japanese just use a lot against us in the Olympics and in World Championships. But the other two are ones that we Americans use. They're quick, fast, and they're, they're going straight from my feet to my knees. So they're good and quick enough, probably two. So check these out, pay special attention to these. If you like them, practice them a lot make sure they become second nature because one thing about these is these are kind of throws that once you do it once you become known for this throw and once you do it once you become hooked on these throws and you'll practice them a lot and they'll be pretty much all you can you find out just how easy they are to do Dar is the world champion from Poland in wrestling this guy's a two-time world champion and man I wrestled him once and I mean he beat me let me tell you and it was so funny because all he did was arm throws and locking up with them, I'm glad he doesn't do Valley Tudo now. Because locking up with them from any tie from anywhere, I feel like you were you grabbing on the water. As soon as you grabbed, he was doing his throw. The special face special attention to the one I call the flying man. That was one of his favorites. Next, I'm gonna show some throws from the back step. And these are conventional back step throws because I don't think most of those are work that well. So I kind of invent my own. And or I pick up things a little bit here, a little bit there, okay. And so basically, they're they're trick throws. I like them because not they're from places where people would expect to be getting thrown in a uh, in a back step. And the way I train for this, or way you can work on your own, is by doing the back step by yourself, walking in, boom, and yeah, pop, and then turn here. Once I change levels, give me space to fly over me. Okay? Now the first throw, I do from a collar throw. He's right here. So what I want to do is I use my form here. And all I want to do is step here and just basically just jump around to my knees. I'm using this. Almost like a cup form. I don't want to grab it. I just want to go here. I don't want him to think anything is about to happen. So what I do is I just go here. Like this. I can almost press them down from this. If I step up just a little bit, I do this. Okay? But we're not doing that. All I'm doing, I'm right here. He thinks, hey, everything's fine. All I'm gonna do right now, change my footing and go. Just spin around straight between, I'm gonna jump straight between his legs. I'm here, I'm gonna open a little bit wider so we can get a better angle. Right here, and I'm going here. From here, when I go, I go here. So I'm here, I go to this. All I'm gonna just jump straight between his legs. Here. It's here. So do this. Go here. Just jump right. Just look how I stagger my legs right here. Right here, if my leg is in front, I can defend it. I can defend this one because it's back. I'm only defending one leg. So I'm right here. All those jump between his legs. Two. Here. Look how I grab his arm right here. I'm here. Now all I do, this is very, very tight. Keep my elbow up. Look where it is. It's at my neck. Not at my shoulder. I'm here. Now all I do is just roll over. Just lay down. And boom. And cover. Watch how I do this. This goes straight to my neck. I'm right here. I got this nice and tight. Remember? Remember this? So I'm right there at the same place. Just like that. But I don't want to do too hard to long. So I'm right here. All I want to do is go here. At my neck. Do it one more time. Here. From this position, a lot of people are afraid of exposing their back and giving up a rear naked choke. But watch this when I do this move. I'm going to slow down and find one thing about it, remember, it's the element of surprise, first thing. Second thing, when I'm here, I got this like this, I'm right here. When I go to do this, he's going to go for a choke. So I'm right here, I'm going to go here, and boom, he goes for a choke. There's a lot of pressure, I'm like this. He's almost going over anyway. I'm gonna do it this time. Watch his feet when I go down. 
go sit on his feet and see how much leverage he has. He's like this, because I'm pulling. I'm right here. Remember all the pressure that's right here? So I'm right here. And when I go, I'm just jumping straight between his legs. It's pretty tough, he's right here. He's light, 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 light weight on his feet. The next throw we want to do is a, uh, it's another element of surprise. And what I'm going to do is, this is a big high amplitude throw. So what I'm going to do, since we don't have a crash pad, and I suggest you do the same if you use this move, just go to your knees and throw them softly and lightly. So what I'll do is a lot of times, even value tool or whatever, I'll go here. I'm right here like this. If he goes to pummel in, he goes to pummel under, I don't know, if he goes to pummel under, I'll close up. Right here, I'll close up. Now I'm going to just basic bicep grab right here. Coming out, grab the bicep, he goes to pummel under, I keep him out. So he goes to pummel over, he goes to pummel over, I let him in. This is nice and tight. I can do one of two things right here. I can jump to my knees, I can do it like keep this leg here and go here. I can just do a little shoulder throw where I just go here and just pop my book. Pop like that, here we go. This is very tight. Look where he is, he's like, I'm here. He goes to pummel in real hard. I said, I'm in there. He's very tight. Now I'm gonna do is back step and throw. Here. Look, I'm, look I'm leaning forward. I'm not leaning back. I'm going here. This time I'm gonna do it one more time. And because we don't have a crash pad, I'll go to my knees just for his safety. Right here. The important thing about this is, like I said, here, this guy's got to come over. He'll do it. You bait him. This is a nice new one. Usually they come over to go in there. But you just like, I let it up, then I close it. And I step in closer. Now it's nice and tight. I don't want to stay here, it's loose. Let's lean into here. Now I've got it caught in here, it's nice and tight. I can just do a high amplitude throw. I'm just going here, going here and just back stepping. Cool. Notice the pop. I'm right here, almost here, step here, he pummels in, I go here, and pop. Pummel in, in, here, and pop him over. The last one is um, more of a, it's, a, it's an easy throw to get and very sneaky. So we're tied up right here, and all I want to do is get him so I go right here, get my space, so I move back. When I get ready to do this move, notice I go to here. I gotta be close to his body, but I still have to have space, create space with my hips. So I'm here, I go here, I'm gonna take my, my knees through and my arm. And I go towards the feet afterwards. Afterwards, I roll towards the feet. But right in here, on the regular tie, head, foot, same, same, uh, same side. Okay, and what I wanna do is, Come to the space right here. If I'm right here, I can't do it, I'm too far. I gotta bring my foot right here. And that's when I go, from here, the minute I step here, I go. And watch this arm right here, I'm close up to my neck. I don't wanna be spinning in there like this. I wanna be spinning in there like this. Okay? The other thing, notice what I'm doing, I'm coming through with the knee high and this arm high. I'm coming through like this. And no time doing this move while I'm spinning with this leg hit the mat. Because if I'm spinning like this, it's slow. But if I spin like this, it's a lot faster. So that's what I want to do. I'm here. All I want to do now is take a step and go. Boom, and go. Notice my knee, my other leg does not hit the floor until he hits the floor. Lots of these things are coming through the same time, like this. Look how my knee is, is just here, nice and tight. So I'm doing. Notice I'm not doing the throw until my foot is near here still. I'm not doing it from here. When I get ready to go, I go one and go two. For his legs. Don't go towards his head. Here you don't want to put this throw. I know this is your follow me. Say you gotta slip your opponent or you're having trouble getting to a single leg. So with this same move, 
I'll go to a single leg. And it's also a good way to, to, to practice it. I'm here, I'm not outside. I'm inside, right in front of the stuff. So I'm here, I take this, I'm here, I take a step, and I go. But this time I'm going to go straight to the single leg to just to train and practice this. If I do it this way, I get more momentum. I put it back a little bit further than normal, so I can really power through. Watch when it comes right through here, my knee. It's really tight. Here. The singlet is also, like I said, if a guy's really slippery, maybe not wearing a shirt. When you get, you start spinning, you keep spinning, stop. Take the singlet. Okay, you watch this tape with your buddy. Now he's throwing you all over the place. He's throwing, he's throwing flying mares and all types of collar throws. The ones I just we just got through learning and, and, and showing and demonstrating. So now I'm going to show you how to defense him. This guy's throwing you because it's. I'm going to tell you, if you get any, but I had a guy at top team who mastered these. And man, there wasn't a guy in that room who could lock up with him anymore. But as soon as you locked up, he would just throw you. He was just like Doris. So once you get a person who masters these, they become rather dangerous. So. Here are the ways to here are a couple ways to defense them. It's, it's, they're hard to defense, but here are two ways to defense them. Okay, now the defenses to these throws. The defenses are important. And one thing about these throws in the first place, you know, you gotta you gotta watch yourself being controlled in here this way. You gotta watch yourself being controlled in here. Like this is a too low down. It makes it easier for him to throw. If I'm in here slightly, you know, elevating the shoulder, not with a lot of a lot of muscle and fuss, but just a little bit, I'm gonna be alright. So what I want to do now is a defense for the first knee, for the third one. We're using go in, take his knee, throw in his hand. And all I want to do, he goes, I stuff his head. That's all I do. Do it slow. He's here. He goes under. I just stuff his head. Pull my arm out. Notice. All I'm doing is just pulling my arm out and stuffing his head. Okay? Now for the other one. I'm right here. And he's gonna, uh, I get the collar tie, and he's gonna try to just uh, go jump it. Object is to jump up and put my knees in his back. I'm trying not to do it too hard because I don't wanna hurt him. Over here, he goes to do it. Jump up, knees in the back, and snatch. See here? That's all I'm doing. It's not a very, very athletic motion. It may look like it, but once he's pulling like that, the only way you can get your arm out is to jump, knees in his back and you're out. And those are two good defenses for those. The next thing I'm gonna show is a lateral drop. The lateral drop is so funny because you see in a lot of high school wrestling rooms and coaches cringe, they hate lateral drops. And one thing I learned about the lateral drop and why my coach didn't like it so much and why my coaches don't like it so much and why I had so much success with, success with it when I wrestled the team said, man, I threw the Russian with it and got five points. I threw the Cuban with it in the Pan Am games and got another five. This is a great throw. The only thing is high school coaches didn't know how to do it. Once I learned and mastered the lateral drop, man, when I got the Valley Tudor, this thing saved my life so many times and also internationally. The thing about it is, notice the, the most important thing is my, is my left arm. Notice I'm pushing my opponent with my leg, my leg position, the position with my legs, and with this. I got, I have like, a, a, like a, I create like a blade here. I'm not pushing here. I'm pushing here, I'm creating like a spring action. That's how I got the Russian with it. After, as a matter of fact, after I threw the Russian with it, it was so funny, we were in, uh, in Monaco. Guess who came out of the audience and congratulated? And you my name. It was Prince Albert of Monaco. It was so funny. He says, geez, Dado, that was a nice one. That was quite an honor. So pay special attention to this move, especially you high school coaches. You guys don't know how to teach this. Because I would have killed people just in high school and in college because I didn't want to do it. But once I became an international wrestler and I developed it, I watched some Russians do it well, I knew how to do this throw. And I use it a lot in Valley too, though, and trust me, it saves a lot of time and energy, especially if you do it well. You got to master those guys. This is one you got to practice, and it's instinctive. I got some guys here on top teams, some guys I have in my, at, over at uh, Gracie Academy. I'm teaching them this move, man. They can hit it from anywhere. So watch out for these guys. They're coming for you. Next. I'm gonna show throws from the classic over under. Remember, I want this here, okay, in case he tries to throw. This hand right here, my right hand, I don't wanna use a lot of pressure in here, but 
just a little bit to keep him honest, not here. Because if I leave it right here, he goes to drop down to my legs. He should go down. I can't stop him in time. But if he's here, he goes to drop. I can keep him up, okay? So it keeps him honest. So I'm right here. First thing I'm gonna do is, a, uh, is what we call a lateral drop. And, and some, a lot of people, a lot of coaches, think this move is, is, is kind of dangerous. And it is, if you don't know how to do it properly. What I wanna do is I wanna get a, a spring action motion in here. I'm gonna push here, and when he pushes back, because he almost throws himself to the side. I'm pushing, he pushes. That's what I want. And notice the whole time, I'm still here. I'm still pushing here, like this. Okay, this time, I'm gonna throw. Pay close attention to this hand. Pushing here, look at what he's doing, he's pushing, to the back, oh good. This time, watch my feet. The thing I wanna do is when I'm pushing, I wanna step here, I keep my legs perfectly straight. I go here, on my heels. If I go on my heels, because if I'm gonna do this throw, and I start right here, flat-footed, I'm not gonna be able to do it. Not this throw, this is a throw from the heels. So I have to go here, I walk straight to here. Same time I'm pushing, he pushes, I'm doing this. Because see, this way, it's faster for me. Because by the time I'm on my heels, he's falling. He's already falling. So the next thing I'll have to do is whip him with this arm. Okay? Notice my head, I'm not here. I'm right here, I'm looking at his feet. I'm using my peripheral vision to look at his feet. I'm not doing this. I'll get guillotine. Or in body two, I'll get a, I'll get a knee in the, in, the, in, the, in the face. So I'm here, he pushes, I go to my heels. Look, watch this hand, I'm going here, real fast. I'm gonna go there and stop. Notice my position. My legs are straight, I'm on my heels, and I'm taking this inside. Now from here, all I'm going to do is throw this in here. Look where he's on his toes. And scissor through. From here, push, he pushes. Go straight to my heels. Another move from there, the same position. It's real good when a guy's out of position. When he has this leg forward. A lot of people do this. And I want to throw. Right here, right here. All I'm gonna do now is just step and sit. Right here, step, sit, bring them over my knee. He's here. All I'm gonna do is this leg is close. I'm gonna go one, two. One, two. Look at this. This is jammed in here. Here. I'm gonna just go. One, I gotta get close to him. One, and sit. I'm going to open my knee. Okay, now I'm going to show an excellent throw for Valley Tudo. It's a hip toss. Reason being, a lot of Valley Tudo guys aren't wrestlers. They're just stand-up fighters. And one thing about the hip toss, it's a great move for someone who's just standing straight up and down. If you watch like Randy Couture, if you watch uh, 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 Dan Henderson's fights, You'll see a lot of hip tosses. They're not big hip tosses sometimes, but they're easy little throws only because a lot of the Valley Tudo guys don't know what they're doing. They come in, they're pushing straight up and down, and they just do an easy little hip toss. I'm going to show you how to do it with a good guy. And one thing about doing it with a good, if you can do it with the back step and doing it with a good guy, you'll be able to do it with every rank amateur to step into an octagon. So first we're going to show some uh, back step drills, and then we're going to go to the throw. This is a real good throw. I suggest you guys practice this throw a lot because you're gonna need a, one thing about it is once you know how to do this throw, you're gonna find a lot of your opponents, once you get in the clinch, are gonna be prime targets for a hip toss. The next thing we're gonna do from here is a hip toss. And this is important. The important thing about a hip toss is a back step. And the back step simply is I wanna spin on one leg rather than try to do moves when I'm doing this, I'd rather do this. It's quicker. As a matter of fact, let's do that drill right now. All I'm gonna do is I'm right here. I'm gonna step, hit the back of my heel, 
with my uh, ankle here. Now all I want to do is throw and change the levels. Right here, my opponent. Notice I'm changing levels every time. If it's hips or back and I got room in here, I can do a hip toss. And all I want to do is go to the zone right in here, right before his body, right in the middle. So one here, I got a good unhook over here. Boom. Boom. Notice I change levels in front of him. This is a hard move to do if you stay high. Watch how you just do this. He might body lock me. He might just lock his hands and pick me up and throw me. So thing I want to do, one more time, right here. Look, I'm in control in here. I'm pushing this out, or like this. I'm gonna step in here. Step here. Watch I change levels. Then here, I'm here. I'm gonna get my space. Step in the zone and twist. Look at this. Okay, next we're going to show 2-on-1 for Valley Tudor. This is a safe 2-on-1 for Valley Tudor. There are two different 2-on-1s that we can do. One, I don't think it's too safe for Valley Tudor, but this 2-on-1, I kind of developed myself. I like it a lot because it keeps you close to your opponent. It keeps him from striking distance, and it keeps you in a position where you can score. We're gonna, we got two takedowns we can do from here. One's like a, uh, a lower butt, a butt hug, I like to call it, and the other one is just a 2-on-1 like, like to a, to a uh, high dive. So we're going to show both of these right now. Next, I'm going to show high dive. A high dive is, it depends on the sport how easy or how hard it might be to get into that position. But a lot of times people get into that position and don't know how to finish. Okay, so I'm going to show finish and a couple different ways to get in. The way that wrestlers and jiu-jitsu players get in, they're usually close in. They're fighting, fighting, fighting hands. One guy, a fake, a guillotine right here. When the other guy stands back up, just right, straight in. And lifts. Usually in Bali Tula, it might be against the fence, against the cage, against the ropes. You're in here fighting, and some kind of way you end up like this. I'm gonna go to that same position, you end up like this. And there's several takedowns, and we worked on those earlier. So, what I wanna do here is I'll just change my position by going straight down here, and I'll own you from right here. It's a lift. You see guys like this, and they don't know how to get the takedown. They get there, they can't get a takedown. So, Let's start from the high dive position. So I'm in here, depending on how I got there, if I was from grappling and I'm here to here, or if I'm against the cage, I'm right here, I'm like this, I just drop down into it. Either way, what I want to do is, pull, I, want to, I like using this grip for this, it's tight. I want to do this and this, keep his body close to mine, and to avoid, in Jiu Jitsu, somebody pulling guard from this position, I want to work fast. So even in wrestling and in Valley Tudor, you want to work fast from this position also. So right here, fake, go in, and here. All I'm doing is I'm stepping in and here. Keeping them close to my body, I'm lifting, and swing. Right here, I step in, lift, and swing. Lift and swing. A good drill for this, so I'll walk in, lift, and swing. Okay, the next position is called seat belt. I see this a lot, a lot in Valley too though, a lot in grappling wrestling, where two guys are going, one guy in it right here, and they both are like bent over trying to fight right here. And this guy's trying to do like the judo little, uh, I think it's Uchimada Ki. So the important thing for me right here in this position, one, keep my head up, the second thing, if I get my legs, I do this. I use my hand here, and I try to go for do a fourth mount. See, I don't want to go inside, I don't want to go outside with it. Go outside. I don't want to go outside with this, so I'm here. Go. This is how I defend it. Try to go outside. That's what I'm doing. If I go inside, I might let him get it. So this, then I go for my little throw from here. Now all I do is I swivel in to here, and I lean back and pull to here. It's very important from this position that I keep my legs together. I'm like this. Not like this, not like this. I'm here. If you, if you guys know Arona, 
he'll kill you from this position. If you're right here, he'll come through here, boom, or he'll come on the outside. I've seen him get a lot of people with it. It's an important thing with guys, especially one thing about this position, this guy has nothing to lose. Look how low I am on, on his waist. I go to here, try to go in, I'm doing this, try. Look, I'm using my hand, keep it out too. Now all I want to do is go to here, look, I'm going to pull onto my knees. Goes right on my knees, and the seatbelt. I'm here. Got this nice and tight. Got this cinch. I'm not here. I'm not standing up. Look how far his hip is when I stand. But when I squat down here, I'm almost to his belly button. Here. Watch when I stand up. I stand up. Go down. Stand up and go up. So I'm here. Now all I want to do is pull him back in this little thing right here. Pull him back. Watch. Doing this. The legs open. He's gonna just go right through and do the boom. Okay, go here. You know, it's gonna be difficult. Stay here and do it. Boom, over into my knees. Another takedown from the seat belt. I'm here. This one works standing and on the mat. I'm right here. I'm blocking. All the way down, he's bent over, fighting in here. And he's, he's trying to hand fight. Boom, 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 boom. Trying to grab my hands. Doing this. All I'm doing is turn this hand over. Watch how I do it. I touch so my palm is exposed. Now I reach up and I grab it. And same thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step forward to here. Now all I wanna do is just pull. With this hand right this hand here does nothing. I just pull to there. And the way that works is his ribs are here, the bottom of his ribs are here, and his bone is right up against them. That's why I don't do this like this. That's why I don't do it like this. I turn his hand over, palm side. And I grab here. If he's bent over real good, he's really in a fight. I can do it right, just right here. I'll bring my knee up like this. I'll bring my knee to here. Same thing here. Now all I do is pull one good time. He's here. The knee here. Defending in this. This hand does nothing. This hand does nothing. This hand goes here and here. He's bent over. We're fighting. All of a step up the knee. A step up in front. Right here and just go. Just pull it. Notice how when I, when I go down to the mat, I pull this knee up and slide on my hip to keep from going into his guard. In here. In here. Got the side over here locked up. I'm just here. Watch this hip. Watch this hip. So I'm here, we're over, bent over and fight. I turn my hand over, I pull it, and slide. This way I avoid the guard. Right to the side now. Now the same move works well on the tatami also. He's on both of his knees. You see when guys are fighting like this, one guy's here, right, the other guy's here. Do the same thing. Pick this leg up, turn this over. Now this knee, I want to bring this way, because I don't want to end up in his guard. So I'm right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one time to here. Still sliding on my hip. Right here. Sliding in here, boom, 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 boom. I turn this over, and I probably will be better off if I put my knee a little bit in front and go here. Slide on my hip. It's here. One leg goes up. Turn my hand down. And when I do this on his ribs with this bone, it causes a lot of pain here. A lot of pain. Today's throws are, are all going to be really pretty basic. And for Valley too, though, if you ever notice Dan Henderson, if you ever watch Randy Gouger, these guys do some amazing throws. The funny thing about those throws, they're all pretty basic throws. They're, the, the, they're like the first throws you learn when you're learning to wrestle or to do record home and wrestling. They're the ones that they're, they're the easiest to do. They're not as complicated. And for Valley too, the ones you, you're boxing, you're throwing your punches, you're getting the clinches, these are the throws that are always readily there. And so that's what we're going to start off with. Nothing here today is going to be really complicated. I don't want to show anything that's going to take you, you know, five years to more or less master, or you can do it and hurt yourself or hurt your, the person that you're going to be Okay, now we're going to go to body locks. And uh, there are many. But one thing about body locks, they're pretty hard to train the first couple few times. It's not so much the guy that's doing the throws, but it's the person being thrown. 
If we don't have a crash pad, it can be tough, okay? So I, I more or less suggest you get an old mattress, you know, go to a local uh, gymnastics center, use the pads, especially if you're going to doing things like belly to belly and back to belly, okay? But what we're gonna do right now today is just a step around body lock from a, just an ordinary clinch position. But first, we're gonna do some drills. The first drill is a walking wall drill. The second drill is a buddy drill. I'm gonna take his hand right here, I'm gonna shake right there, He's going to hold my right here, my tricep. Now all I'm going to do is take the steps that I would take to get to his body, throw my head back and my hips up and over. Okay, here. Look where I go, change levels. I'm going to go here and throw my head back. One more time, I'm right here. He's holding me nice and secure here so I don't fall. So I'm going to do is go here, here, boom, boom. A lot of these throws like this, we, when, I, when we do the drills, we go up on our toes. But a lot of times when we do the throws, we actually want to go to our heels. The reason why, especially this body lock right here, because when I get to here, I'm already falling. A lot of times, it's, so it makes it a faster throw. I go here and pop off, my, off of my, my heels. A lot of times we go from here, we go from here to here. We don't want to do that with this, with this throw. So what I want to do with this throw is we're locked up like this. Maybe he's locked up also. We're both in the clinch position. All I want to do is step to here on my heels. Notice how I'm, when I go there, I'm like this. It makes him do, he's got no balance, he's doing this. Okay, okay. And the reason for that is, a lot of guys, what they'll do in this position is, they'll step around, you know, like this. I know this guy's going to come around and just do like a little headlock on him. Come around here, look, look he's got with the arm in there. Now you're in trouble, almost. But we'll come back to this position. I keep my hands in the middle of the small of his back. I don't let them rotate at all. I'm here, I take a step to here, I'm on, on my heels, he's slightly off balance, and all I want to do is throw off my heels, straight over my head, and twist from right here. Something out there. Notice I'm on my heels, and it may not look like I'm all on my heels, but I am. The minute I do this, I'm here. I don't want to fall over, I want to be here. Already falling. Here, hands in the back. Take this leg back a little bit further, so a little bit more torque, a little bit faster, to here. What I'm doing right here is just throw up my hips. From here. Take this leg just a little bit back, look. Still, head, leg, same side. So I'm here. I'm going to do, take a step, to here and sit on my, my Back to here. Okay, now, let's go back to that same motion with the person who's flat footed and lean. Right here, I go to do the move, a step, and I'm here. And he just grabs on maybe like right here, and across my head, like that, okay? I don't stay here, because right here he's got a headlock. So the thing I want to do is quick, go to here. From right here, I can lift and throw again. Right here, same throw as before. Same throw as before. From here, I go to step, from here. He comes across with a headlock, all over this, go to here, here. Notice, when I go there, I change my lock from this to this. Now all I want to do is use my hips to go, to hit here and go up. Stay low, here and, and throw them over. It's pretty difficult without a crash pad. Okay, the first real takedown I'm going to show today is a two-on-one to what I call a butt hug. In Valley 2 though, it's better to go to the butt than to go to the lower back, especially when you got as much control as you have in this time. And all I'm going to do is basically take it across, watch, keep special notice on my hand and where, on this hand right here. Notice I'm keeping it here and I'm raising it from here to here. I'm going from here to here and shoving it and going straight down to his butt. Go to where you want. Don't go to what he gives you. Go to what you take and go to what you need. And this one, if you take the butt, you're going to have more control staying out of the guard. This next move is a real good way to take your opponent's back. It's kind of a sneaky move. I love this move. The first thing I do is probably from the tie. If I get this down, I swipe his belly, come over here. I got his hand right here, right at the wrist. This and this. Here, at the bottom. Not here. He's too strong here. Here he's weaker. So I go here, take this nice little handle here. Remember this tie? Defending only one leg. That's this one, the one that I can see. 
I can't see this leg that well. So I don't want to keep it in front where he can attack it. I'm going to take away as many of his offenses as I can. Remember this tie here? I'm going to move this and my stomach to make it strong and stronger. Put this elbow, elbows in, this elbow here so we can't dig in. No, pummel in. I don't want him to pummel in because he pummels in. I don't have anything. Look, from here to there. Okay? So what I want to do is here and here. Notice where my chin is outside, not here. I can't go anywhere here. Here I can. And all I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to take this hand, I'm going to pull it up a little bit right here, and I'm going to shove it through with my hand right on his elbow. Here. Boom. Right here. Right at his butt. From here, I'll just pull. Defending one leg. This one, not that one. My head is up. I got this shut closed down right here. All I'm going to do is take this and push it and take this under. I'm not doing this. No. Nice and simple. Nice and small. To here. From here, all I do is push. Right at his butt. The whole time, notice, I'm looking at this hip. Looking at this hip on the other side, I'm doing this. Okay? Same move. Okay, now we're going to show from that same two-on-one tie. But I like this type of valley too with the two-on-one because my opponent doesn't have any real uh, potential ball is hitting me or gets a good knee to front this off. I'm controlling one side of his body, of his body completely. Notice the whole time I'm watching his hip. So right now we're going to go from that to what I call like a hip snatch. We're going to go from if, if this if the two-on-one is not available to the, to the high dive, I'm going to go to what I call like a hip snatch. And notice when I do this, notice I'm changing levels and stepping all the way around. We're stepping around hip snatch and pull my opponent back. Pay special attention to my left leg. Notice how I, I come up forward first with my right leg and I pivot around and change levels and grab here all the way around. Notice the level change. The level change is very important. Let's say with the same move, he blocks my elbow. He's seen me do this move before. So I can't shove it across. He's blocking it right here. I can't shove it. Okay, no problem. Remember, I'm watching his hip. So now I want to go to that hip. Watch my footwork. One, two, three. Notice when I go there, I sit. Because if I go to a hip, I'm looking at the hip the entire time. I know what I want. I'd rather take his back. I'm looking at the hip the entire time. I got my elbow in. I'm holding and controlling his elbow on the other side. Now all I want to do is go one. Watch when I go to here. If I just try to reach for his hip, it's too far away. If I go to here and try to reach his hip, it's too far away. But look, look what happens when I sit. I'm all the way in front. Now all I want to do now, I, it's important that I pull and shuffle backwards. I'm going to whip motion with him. If he's here, I'm going to whip around like this. He stumbles back. Defending one leg. One, then two. Now let's go to another important thing, right? Taking his back. When I take his back, I don't want to do this. He's got too many things he can do. If I pull him, if I pull him around and he goes here, like a lot of guys go to the American from here, boom. A lot of jiu-jitsu guys will roll to your, to your ankles. A lot of good wrestlers will do a, uh, will go to here. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to go, go behind and go here. Here, try to attack my ankles. I'm holding him right here. Try to go for the, the American. He can't do it with just one arm. From here, so what I have to do right now is wait for him to attack my hands. When he attacks, boom, I catch the wrist. Here, he attacks, I catch the wrist. And here, I go inside, deep, like this. This is nice and strong. Okay? The upper body takedown from here is, I use my knee to ride him down. Put all my weight on this leg. I use my knee. I don't have to put pressure on it. In the beginning, I just do this. Just like that. Another angle. From here, he attacks my hands, both hands, and just roll over. Watch how I roll this over. If he's got this, I just roll it over to here. Watch my back leg this time. Big strong guy, it's hard to take down. I'm here, I'm gonna push my knee. First put all my weight here, then put my knee here. Not in, in the back, not in front, right on the side, right here. I'm like this, you step strong, let's do that. Notice when I do that, it does this. 
Okay? Going, all my weight is there in the first place. Now do this. And he goes down. Okay, we showed earlier how to do an arm drop. And there are many times in Valley Judo or any type of Jiu-Jitsu when you take your opponent's back. And the, another thing I hate to see is when my fighters take someone's back on the feet and they can't get a takedown. They can't get a takedown. I'm going to show several ways to get a takedown today. One way is with is what I call a uh, an, uh, a forearm assault. And all you can do is attack his thigh with your forearm. Watch this move. Okay, anytime you end up taking your opponent's back, I'm behind him. So remember, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to here. I don't want to go straight to this. I go straight to this. He's got Americana. So I'm saying now I'm in trouble. But there is a defense to and for this. And all I want to do is the minute he gets it. I would drop, I would change my weight, go to the side of to here, go straight to this crotch, grab my own arm, and lift. So I'm like this. I'm right here. He goes to Americana. All I'm going to do, step to here, reach under, grab my own hand, and lift him. I grab him like this. I'm right here. I'm behind. He goes for it. All I'm going to do is change the I'm, I'm not lifting with my back. I'm lifting with my legs. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to here. Grab my own hand and lift and dump him forward. There I'm out of it. I'm going from, hey, he's got it. I'm stepping in, going up the crotch. Not around the leg. If he's here, he's got this. I want to go here. Watch this. I want to go straight up his crotch. Not around the leg. I want to go here and dump him. Straight up and down like this. Straight up and down. Like this. Look. I grab my own hand. And go here, grab my own wrist. Another thing we do, this guy's if he's here, a lot of times in jiu jitsu and submission wrestling and in Valley Tudo, the guy will go to here and he put his hands on the mat and keep you you back here struggling, struggling, struggling. What I want to do is I'll make a box. Put this elbow on my side, put put this my forearm on his thigh. About a quarter of the way down. Not halfway, but about a quarter of the way down from his waist. So I'm here, I move this to here. Now all I want to do is use either this grip or this grip. If I can't get this grip, I'll use this one. Now all I want to do is keep my, keeping this square, put all my weight like this. Come on, come Keeping this box, keeping this close to my waist. Now I'm going to do right now is go here. Nice and simple. All I'm going to do is cross this to go here. I go here, it's locked on the waist, keeping that to keep my little box. Look at this. I'm like this. This is here, this is here. I'm not sliding this way. I've got this, I got this right here. I'm just going in, in an angle that way. I'm not pulling back. I'm going here and push. I'm go here, I'm go right down, and here. I'm gonna use my legs in back. Push up a little bit. I'm right here, use my legs, and I just push. We do the same thing from standing. Say I go to everyone, I do an arm drag or whatever, and I end up behind him. And he's just standing straight up like this, and I'm here. And I, don't have, I didn't have time to go to this, but I came around and back, and I went here. Now the thing I want to do is go straight to that lock. Go straight to the side right, keeping my head up, the lock right here. Go straight to this here. Do the same thing. I'm right down at the box. I'm right here. I'm just going like this. Okay? Suppose you get that one guy who's really, really strong, okay? And so you're having a hard time getting him down just by using pressure. I'm right here. I don't want to stay hot. He's got an American right here. See? But if I go low, if I get right here, I go low, he doesn't have him too tight around his waist. He doesn't have him, there's no room there. But if you got one guy, if you go there, he's still standing up hard. You can't get him to go down. He's real strong right here. All I'm going to do now is use my knee, right? Here. Here now. Here now, right? Here. I want everything to go this way and forward. So it's really, really strong. Putting the pressure's not falling. I go here. That's all I want to do. Ride him down. Simple but strong on this side. It's here. I'm going to leave the pressure down, he's not going. You got pressure in his thighs, he's not going, okay? Put it here. And you know, the funny thing about it is, when I'm doing this, I'm putting so much weight straight down here that this wants to buckle. So if I put this a slight bit of pressure at the knee right here in the middle, it'll buckle that way. So do that. On my hips, that's right really, really well. Let's go here. And there's a takedown. Next, I'm going to show throws from double unders. This is a, all these all these are key positions for Valley Tudor. Every Valley Tudor fight, 
you see everyone you have, everybody's always in these positions and they don't know what to do, don't know how to control the other opponent. Okay, one thing about this, notice on all my double underhooks, I have my head up in the air, my head is up. Only because I don't want it down and getting in the way of my chin or my face getting in the way of my throat or my my, my uh, face and my motions in here. So keep your head up in here and keep a good high A lock. This is it. All I'm doing is this. Nothing, nothing real fancy, nothing real tough. Trust me, this is a good grip. All I'm doing is this and doing this. And if I want it tighter, the thing I'm do to make this grip tighter is, and that a lot is so funny, a lot of fighters, a lot of wrestlers even. They get into this, how do I make it tighter? The thing you want to do to make it tighter, I grip here, bring my elbows together, then I put my elbows into my body. This gets as tight as you want to be. This is as tight as I am strong, as tight as you are strong. If you're a big strong guy, you can give a lot of people a lot of problems from this top. Next, we're going to show throws from the, from the double underhook. And that's when I come into this position. And I got my, my, my hands cut out a lot. I'm just locking like this, I don't need a whole lot of control from this position. I got it right here. And all I want to do is, I want to make like an A. What I want, what ideally, I want this position, I want him like this. Hard to do. You can't just walk up to any fighters, raise his hands up, he's going to do this and he can lock up. No, but I'm going to show you how to get to that position. I'm going to lock my hands up and make an A at the beginning of his neck, like right here. You got the A, I'm just saying Look, my head, and my leg, I'm defending only one leg. This leg is in front, same size as my head. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to shove it to his neck. I just literally shove the A up to his neck, like this. Shove it up, and when it, once I get this, I can change grips real fast. I go here, watch my elbows, here. I shove the A, Bop. Okay, from here, now I'm gonna squeeze my elbows together, get them nice and tight, look one leg forward, my leg is back, I take them to the far side, I just twist. From here. Shove my, my grip, shove my grip to his neck. At the same time, I'm gonna change hands. Here. Now all I'm gonna do is just twist. See, there here he is when the fall. The other side of my leg is in the way. Here the leg is back, so that's the side I throw to. Now all I'm doing is this grip, change it to this grip. From the grip before these two fingers, here, low. Here. Come, I hug his face to my to my under my neck. Here. Now all I do is just twist. Now the second move from the same position is a bear hug. A bear hug should and is one of the easiest moves in the book. A lot of people have trouble with it only because they're doing a lot of things wrong. When I hit the bear hug from this position, what I want to do is I want to get to his waist even better to his butt. So I want to do first thing, I got my lock up high. I don't want to be here. I want to be here. The first thing I want to do, just one leg inside. I pull him to me. Look at his feet when I do this. Once I pull him to here, the normal reaction is going to be to do this. Because he's off balance here. So when he pulls back, that's when I go. From here, I pull, and then yell to here. So I'm here. Watch my hands. I go here. I got a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to go here, then I'm going here. And to get my body down there, I go here, here, when I get to here, I probably want to change my grip. From here to here. Notice how I leave my feet. That makes it more, it, that makes my changing levels faster and stronger. I'm not just going here, pulling here, and going like this, straight down, it's too slow. But when I go here to here, it's faster. Notice on that one, I didn't stand back up. That's the mistake a lot of people make with this move. I'm here. When I get to here, all I do is this. What a lot of people do, they get double unders and they do this. They're doing this. Try to take the guy down. But all they got to do right here, if they got this in place right here, all he needs to do is change levels. Here. Look at my, my head. Right there. Not with my face, just the side of my head. Here. Pull. And he's trying, to, he's trying to get back. Because right now he's like this, he's going to bounce, he's leaning like this. Okay? Notice that time I went to the butt. If I get to his butt, it's going to be even stronger. But the important thing is, when I'm here, 
All I want to do is pull. Look at this grip. I go from this grip to boom. Here, my A, I do this like a hammer. And hit right here. Pull. Now I'm at the butt. You see me using, now I use my head. Notice this. Come right here. Then I go in here. Boom. From here, change. Watch, watch my, my head and my legs. And the good thing about this, I can also avoid going into the guard if I want. Thighs are important, and escaping thighs is even more important, especially with a lot of, a lot of times, you know, we fight big, strong guys, and they can hook you in one way or another, and it's almost impossible to get out, especially when they go to this salto type. When you you got like a bear hook or something, they come in here. That's a salto type. You got, if you've been one of those with a big, strong guy, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you a real way, a real easy way to escape from that. And all it is is simple as counting to two. One, two. And from there, we go to guillotines and all kinds of different things. But first, let's escape the, the salto top, especially before someone throws it. Okay, a lot of fighters have problems in this position because with the other guy, the other guy will clinch him up like this, okay? The thing I want to do here is count to two. So I'll just go one, two. I don't want to put my hands completely out, but I'm using, look, I'm using leverage from this side for this side. I'm using my shoulder here and just pulling it here until I get this. If, if, if your opponent does that, then I do the other one. Here, notice my legs. My leg, my head on the same side. I'm defending only one leg now. So I go one, two. Now I got here. And usually what happens is a lot of guys will try to back out. And once they try to back out, what I'll get like the, what I'll do is I'll lift them. I'm gonna all that space I create. I'm doing something gonna lift. Look at my hands. I'm gonna slap his back. Here, here, lift. You know, notice my leg. When I go for the guillotine, I get my leg out. Back. And here, I lift this. I'm doing real slow this time, so you see what I'm doing. I'm gonna lift. Look, I'm gonna lift here. Lift and raise my arm. You see here? Go one, two. Then we start to back out like this. All I'm gonna do is lift and back. Lift, boom. Watch how I pull this arm all the way out. I'm right here, he backs out, like this, and I'm just going to lift, back, to this leg. It helps me with my body weight, my body weight goes here. Now I'm just bring this out, and get it. From here, one, two, I'll get these in. Now he backs out, I'm going to lift, and just, one, two. He starts to back out. I do this, you know, when I pat him in, this arm comes out. I don't leave my legs in front because I just stay like this. He'll take a single. Two really good takedowns from the bear hug are, one is what I call counting is one, two, three. A lot of these, these don't really have names because they're kind of my inventions. I love, I love bear hugs and I love uh, double underhooks. So this is another one that I kind of picked up somewhere, probably some some old broke down Russian, someone who didn't need it anymore. And all I'm doing is I'm just going straight from the bell hook to a one, two, three. I showed this to Minot to Minotaro and his brother. They love this takedown. I showed him this and I showed it to another kid that's another up and coming star here in Brazil. He's an Italian kid. And I showed it to him, he says, Daryl, he ain't shooting nothing else. Because all he does, he fumbles in, he gets he counts it through. And that's all this is. It's an easy one, two, three, easy ass takedown. Okay, the next move from here is one where I just basically simply count to three. So I'm here, and I got it low right here. So what I want to do now, this move right here is one that I showed uh, Minotauro. He's had a lot of success with it. A lot of the other fighters prefer this one. It's a real easy takedown, especially off the ropes or off the cage. I'm in here, you're going to be fighting with the guy right in here. All I want to do is start taking my foot and moving it forward into him. Notice my foot. One. Two, three. Now I'm doing is going one. Am I here? I'm going one, facing this way. Two, facing out. Notice my legs are getting wider. Two, facing out. Three, facing out. The whole time, I'm right here. 
it feet, a lot of people worry about it pummeling in. But one thing about it, I got to control like this. I'm controlling it, and keep from getting in. I'm controlling here, here. It's like this, okay? And I got this kind of a grip right here. Okay, I'm right here so you can see even better. One, one, two. The whole time this clip is like this. I'm keeping, keeping him tight. I'm keeping him from pummeling in. Another angle. Try to pummel in. See what I'm saying? I'm keeping it tight so you can't pummel in. I don't want to pummel in. So I'm right here. A lot of times when guys are here too also they'll try to back out. Right here. So that makes it even tighter for me too. So I'm, I'm going like this right here. I'm putting pressure down here. And that means my chest is pressing here and my elbows I do this. And that keeps him from being able to pummel in. So I'm here. I go one, two, three. It's just simple. And with my legs. This leg does not move. One, two, three. Simple. My opponent is here. One, two, three. Bear hugs are important because every Valley Doodle fight ends up in one sooner or later and nobody gets a takedown. Everybody's too high. If you ever see one of my fighters and he's in a bear hook position and he doesn't finish, I don't care if it's in a practice room in Timbuktu, give me a call. I'm gonna come there and be on him like white on rice because bear hook, it's, it's a power position and it's a power position for the person in the position. And the person who's being bear hook, if you were gonna start a fight and the referee said, hey, what do you wanna start with? You wanna start standing straight up or you gonna stand in the bear hook position? You're gonna take the bear hook. But the thing is, are you going to finish it? A lot of guys don't finish it. I'm going to show you today, once and for all, how to finish the bear hug. This is not only for Valley Tool, guys. This is for wrestlers. I hate to see people in that position they can't finish. And all it is is a simple level change. Watch this. There's another bear hook that I like to use. And this is one when you have like a really, really good, strong opponent. And I want this bear hook. I, got, I did all the work to get the double unders. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull him to me again. And then what I do, he's going to start to back out. That's what the guys are going to do. The guys are going to start to back out. I'm right here. So I go here. And I go here. From here. Go here. 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 And then, notice I'm changing my grip. I'm here. Pow. Pow. Right here, got my A. Boom. 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 Here. Notice I'm not doing this. I'm doing this with my head and shoulder. Same way I would block it. This is a door, and I want to keep somebody from coming in. I would push here. I'm not pushing like this. Hey, I'm back. I'm still on bear hugs. I love bear hugs, and I hate to see somebody in that position and not finish. It's such an easy place to finish from. Notice on these, on these positions also that my head is more in front than to the side. You don't want to give up a guillotine here. We don't want to give up guillotines from this position. Keep the head more in front than to the side. And notice the change, when I change levels, I'm leaving my feet to have more power to get down to the mat. Okay. The next throw, uh, takedown I'm going to show is one from another, another from my favorite position, and that's a throw bomb. This one's fairly simple. It's great later on in the fight when your guy is slippery. You got a, a slippery, wet fighter, and you're pummeling, you get the double unders, you're having a hard time taking them down. Guys, remember this move. This one will save your ass. Trust me. It saved my ass a lot when I was wrestling those later rounds, when I worked real hard to get double unders on my opponent, and I couldn't get a takedown because he was too wet and too slippery. Same thing Valley Tudor. This move will save your ass. Pay special attention. Jot this one down right on the back of your hand. Cheat notes during the fight. Look at it later on in the fight. Hey, when the guy's wet and slippery, and you and you pump and you're working your ass off your double unders, you're working trying to push this guy to the ropes to get him in, you got double unders, he's too wet, too slippery to take down. That's you look at your cheat notes and you go back to the throw bar. Okay, the last takedown that I'm gonna show from double unders is a throw bar. With this move, I'm right here, I got the double unders. Maybe my, my opponent's too slippery to do a lot of the other things. So this is one place where him being slippery is gonna help me. So I'm right here. I got the A up here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fake this way and throw, clap it. Right here, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fake this way. This causes him to react. He shuts down this way. So when I go here, 
he'll go back to the side because he thinks I'm going to try to throw him that way. So he'll come back here hard, okay? So that's what I want to do. Spade. And throw. Notice my level change. I'm here. I got one leg in, defending one leg. I fake. And here. My feet never move. Fake. And right here. Fake. The important thing about this move is when I fake, I just do this. Do this. Do this. Then I throw them that way. With this. Fake. So I fake and fake. Não, 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 começou aqui. Vai, você que é singlet, nada mais. Vai. Não, just for him. Yeah. Você que é uma coisa, você que é singlet, nada mais. Only singlet, ok? Eu também, né? Eu também. Você também, nada mais. Você é singlet, só. Você também, singlet, nada mais. Vai. Vai, singlet, só. Todo mundo, agora, singlet, só. Nada mais. Vai, 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 vai. Vai, que ela vai, não vou. Vai, 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 vai,
Bucks, the white Bush Bucks, they ain't Clint Luther, what's the place of mine? Bob! Bob! And Pua, or Gordon. Go get that Luther. No, no, go get that. Jetta. Hey, no! That was that. And Pua, or Gordon. Bob. Pua, Bob. I'm all right, kid. Pua. Bob! Bye, Bua. Bua, bye. Vamos, vamos, vamos. Bom, bom, muito bom. Bua. Bye, Shaolin. Bye. Bye, Shaolin. Bye. Bye, Shaolin. Bye. Good ball, Mark. 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 Good ball, Come on, boss. Vamos, vamos. Pouco tempo. Pouco tempo para o mundo, para todo mundo. Que três semanas. Dois semanas para o trabalho muito. Boss. Vai, 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 vai. Empurra, Shalem. Empurra, Ficola. Boss. Vai, vai, Jumar. Yes. Vai, Jumar. Bem se alto. Boa. Bem se alto. Bom, bom, Shalem. Muito bom. Bom, bom. Ele grande, ele forte. Muito bom, boss. Muito bom. Você 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 tem um ele sempre aí. Você agora também. Vá! Não, boa, vá! Empurra! Vá! Come on, vá! Vai, Daniel! Come on, empurra! Vamos, vamos, vamos! É bom, 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 vá! Vá! Vai, boa, vai! Good, good, bom, bom, boa, vai, vai! Tem gente, tem gente, vai! Como eu tava? Como eu tava? Pera aí, né? Não, essa posição aí, não. Eu vou lá, vou lá. Vai, vai, vai! Vai, Daniel! Vai, Tony! Bota, 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 bota! Vai, 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 vai! Come on, boa! Você tem três semanas, vá! Três semanas para Guaraluca, três semanas para o Janeiro, três semanas para tudo, vá! 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 Como é, Daniel? Vá! Vá! Tem um subaco, cara. Vocês estão indo no futebol. Pegou no primeiro? É você aqui. O futebol não pega. Não, não. 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 Rapidinho, prepara! Vai, Tem pouco tempo. tempo, come on, prepara! Já! Vai! Bom, Diego, muito bom! Bora! Com ele! Bora! Bom! Amar! Amar! Amar, você joga de novo? Amar, quem der? É, 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 Sim, mas aí é o que era também. Você, você tem? Depois vai você dá. Eu sei. Depois você dá. É o que era também. Não, você não, você não, você não. Prepara! Rapidinho, tem pouco tempo. Pouco tempo, tem pouco tempo. Prepara! Já!
Our side, our side. Our side. Okay, yeah. Main here. Prepare! Agora, segura, segura, agora, segura. 
Legs off it. Good. Bom, 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 bom. Now, alternate direction? No. Five. Five. No. Simple. Simple. Okay. Look at you. We'll say, we'll say uh, a key. Nunca. A key. Simple. We'll say on a key and you come back. Let's start. Think fast. Okay. Simple. We'll say. Vá, vá, vá. Você sempre aqui. Nunca tem que tirar. Nunca. Vá. 
Vamos lá, boa! Acima dele, cara! Acima dele, Fabio! Bora, é porra! Acima do mano! E assim não vai! Caramba! Vai, Fabio! Vai, sim! Boa, Fabio! Aê! Primeiro! É o gol! Vai levantar! Primeiro, quem? Eu sozinho! A cabeça tá batendo! Bora, bora, bora! Fabio! De novo! De novo! De novo! Fabio! Fabio tem que bater! De novo! De novo! De novo! De novo! De novo! Sozinho, cara! Sozinho! Bora, malhada! Porra, caralho! Olha com essa carinha ali! Vai, vai, vai! Vai, não, Ayala! 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 Vai até sumou com a força pra caralho. É. Pá! Vai, pô! Queima a perna, ó! Para, para! Vai dar o pé, caralho! Não sei, gente. Ele foi na minha perna. Você, meu rei, bora! Vai, Mauri, continua. Ah, Amri! Mauri fez três anos. Vai! Bom, bom, bom. Não, não porra! Tem que ser. Ah. Que barulho foi assim? É, eu tenho que dar o Ah, tá vendo? Eu não fui assim, fui assim, fui pra perto. Foi igual um touro bravo. Vamos lá, vai, vai, vai. Foi assim, aí foi descer. Vamos lá, vai, vai. Foi assim, ó. Foi assim, aí foi. Eu vou aí, sem vergonha, rapaz. Todo mundo aqui, agora, vai, vai. vai.